Call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020. Roll call. 12 are present, Your Honor. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation led by the Alder from the Second. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's invocation will be a moment of silence for the victims of last week's shooting at the Molson Coors facility in Milwaukee. Please keep them and their families in your thoughts. Approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alder from the third, second by Alder from the seventh um, to approve the minutes of the February 4th, 2020 meeting. Any corrections that need to be made? Seeing no requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Minutes have been approved. Approval of the agenda. So moved. Motion. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, like to move. The first item of Section V, uh, first reading of ordinances. I have, uh, there's some people here that are interested in speaking on that, and I'd like to move that to the, uh, the head of the agenda for tonight, please. Alder, you want to move all of them? No, just, just, just the one, just the first one. Are you sure? Well, I'm, well, if it's easier to move all of them, then let's move all of them. Sure. Okay. okay. So ordinance is first reading. You may enter suspension of the rules. Advance ordinances one through five to a second reading. So a motion has been made to amend the agenda. No. Motion was made by the alder from the fourth. We're, we're alder from the seventh. I noticed there are some people in the uh, gallery here who are waiting for their, uh, uh, some of the protection and policy uh, items to come up. So if we could move that up to the first uh, committee after uh, before improvement in services before K, if that's okay. Oh, well, okay, that, I wasn't aware of that either, so, okay. Oh, thank you, all right. Well, then, if, uh, how about after improvement of services? Okay, so we had a motion to... Oh, it is. Forget it. <laughs> Thought it was further down, sorry. Okay, this motion made by Alder from the fourth, second by Alder from the ninth to amend the agenda um, to move the ordinances first reading um, to the top of the agenda. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Uh, now we'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the approve the agenda as amended. All the, uh, motion made by Alder from the seventh, second by Alder from the tenth to um, approve the agenda as amended. I'd like to pull number one. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I jumped yep. ahead. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The agenda has been approved as amended. On to report by the mayor. Um, not a whole lot tonight, just wanted to let you all know that I will be on television from 6.30 to 7 p.m. on Saturday, March 7th for the CP Telethon. So um, I'll put out the, uh, the phone number on Facebook and it'd be great if you were to call me because it's embarrassing to sit there empty handed, right? So, um, and the other thing, uh, Chris Teske, brought this to my attention. Um, I think you all probably are aware, but Clover has been returned safe and sound, our hedgehog. So all is well, and we can all sleep soundly at night. Um, and that concludes my report. Undo announcements. Alder from the 10th. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I've got a couple. Uh, I took a tour of the Big Brothers Big Sisters facility on North Broadway, and they gave me a card, and it says, hey, guys, we're in special need for male mentors. We have over 65-plus boys waiting for a big brother. You can end that weight, be a big. So I'd just like to do a shout-out for that. Uh, I'm also part of a group called Circles Green Bay, and the Big View team on April 20th is going to be hosting a symposium on area poverty. We're working on a, uh, a program for that, and I'll, I'll share that as, as time goes on. But uh, that was well attended last year. Um, I'd also like to, uh, what Corp Alder Corpus Dax talked about most cores. My mother grew up across from Miller Brewery. That was a place I hung out a lot, not the brewery itself, but in the neighborhood. And it was, it's very sad. It's my hometown, and I, I know some of those the folks that kind of work in that area. I'd also like to mention Mark Almer, who just passed away. He was a firefighter. Uh, he was a friend of mine. He was also a constituent and uh, worked for the fire department for a good 25, 30 years, and he just recently passed. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the 7th. Uh, thank you, I just have one. Uh, this Thursday at 11.30 at the NWTC Center on um, Cedar there, or no, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Old Main is having their state of Old Main, uh, so it's always a, a good time, a little food, and to find out how their year went. So, thank you. Very good. Any other announcements? From the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. I have two. Uh, one is just a quick update on the status of the relocation of the coal piles. Uh, we're expected to hear within the next uh, day or two uh, whether or not there will be any remaining funds available in the Hyper Assistance Grant. And, and if so, our hope is that the Senate will take this issue up uh, to be able to allocate the, the balance or the required uh, or the requested amount of funds for the preliminary concept plan of the J.P. Pulliam site. Uh, so now would be the time to contact your state senators, uh, and I would anticipate that we'll hear some updates on that, like I said, in the next day or two. Uh, secondly, I just want to uh, call out, simply because there's been a lot of um, community discussion around the recent placement of a violent sex offender in my district. And so while that particular placement, uh, the city unfortunately um, has to abide by state law, and so there's, there's nothing that we can do to prevent that placement within the law as it exists. I do want the public to know that we are not without recourse. And so uh, I have talked with uh, our city attorney's office and, and we're currently exploring what remedies might be available to us through the legal channels. Uh, additionally, I'll be submitting several communications at the end of the meeting tonight uh, to talk about ways that we can, I guess, redefine uh, how that area looks and, and how we might be able to reposition Green Bay uh, to have a little bit more uh, say with respect to placements in that area. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the first. Um, thank you. Just a little story. Um, back when I was principal at Red Smith School, I had a wonderful custodian, and it was the Monday after daylight savings time, and he proudly came to my office and let me know we had all the clocks turned back. But you need to spring forward. Um, that's what you need to do. Um, so this Saturday, don't turn your clocks back. Spring them forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. This Saturday. Any other announcements? Really Sunday. OK, we're going to move Sunday. on really for Sunday. to appointments and then get to those ordinances. So on to appointments. Entertain a motion. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to confirm the reappointments. Yes, Alder. All right. Do you have comments, Alder? Yeah, yeah I do. Thanks. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Van de Castle is the chairman, I believe, of the Green Bay Housing Authority. <clears throat> and myself and the neighborhood around uh, Mason Manor, there was a new policy put in place that adversely, greatly adversely affected the neighbors. <clears throat> and so the neighborhood and I put in a request to be on an agenda to discuss it, to be explained why it's being done. Could it be changed? Could it be tweaked? Seems like good government, open government. Well, Mr. Van de Castle refused to put it on the agenda, shut the door right on him and said, yeah, I don't have to, so I'm not going to. 
So um, I don't want that kind of representation on a committee. I'm going to be voting no against both of these, and I'd like them recorded. Thank you. Got it. Appreciate that, Alder. I <clears throat> was not aware of, of that experience. I've had you know, really positive interactions with uh, Attorney Van Castle, so sorry to hear that that was your experience. Um, any further comments on those appointments? So we're going to take them up individually. Um, so we're on Matt Keepers. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Mr. Keepers has been reappointed. On to William Van Castle, uh, Alder from the third. You see my. You see my nothing. No. Okay. You see it now. Yes. Thank you. Could you ask uh, Alderman Worry about the policies that he wanted um, presented to the. Um, Housing Authority. Alder, you care so to... he could enlighten us, so we have more of a background. Sure. Alder, you care to speak to that at all? I'm not sure that. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure that it, the exact policy itself is what matters. The fact is that the neighborhood didn't have a voice. It was regarding a smoking policy, uh, which forced the residents off the property, and they were hanging out in people's yards, in the sidewalks, uh, even coming up to the doors <laughs> in nearby neighborhoods and causing some some big problems uh, instead of maybe working with it and making a place you know on the property maybe on the edge they just refuse to, to listen and talk about it so thanks got it. Alder from the third I, I got a question uh, as a suggestion maybe we should send this back you talk to mr. van de castle and get his response and then come back I mean what's the rush he's still on the committee I mean, if we just postpone it for two weeks, and then we could find out what the heck is going on, why, um, I think it would be an easier, more smooth uh, vote, I guess. It's right. a suggestion. Yeah, appreciate that, Alder. Uh, so I don't know if uh, someone wants to refer it back so you can take a look at this, Mayor? I'll consider that. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 4th. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I've worked with uh, Mr. Vandecastle on the ethics board for the last four years. And while I can't answer to uh, what happened uh, with the Green Bay Housing Authority, I can say that uh, he has handled himself in a very respectful manner while on the board. His uh, uh, comments, opinions, and questions have always been, I think, uh, spot on towards trying to find a resolution to uh, any of the situations that were before the ethics board. and. Uh, as to the housing authority, again, I can't answer that, but uh, I do support him for the uh, the ethics board. And I, if it wants to be referred back, I'd be willing to listen to his explanation as to what occurred on the housing authority. Thank you. So, Alder, Alder from the sixth. Um, likewise, I know um, Mr. Van den Castle from the uh, Water Commission, and I've always thought he was very respectful. I'm also on the ethics. Uh, very respectful and everything, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised on that. But exactly, um, I think as um, Alder Nicholson had mentioned, I think it should be referred back, and it needs to be discussed. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the tenth. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would. I have no problem with uh, Mr. Van Kessel being on the ethics board, but I, I would uh, like to see it referred as well. You know, as far as the housing authority, so. Thank you. Alder from the 12th. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I concur with the other, most of the other speakers. Uh, Mr. Van de Castle, I've had nothing but positive interactions with him. He actually lives down the road from me. Uh, a little concerned about what Alder Weary mentioned regarding the concern with the Mason Manor residents. I represented that area for a while, and I know that folks who live in that facility, which essentially is a public housing uh, facility, um, they're very, they, they deserve a voice just like any other person throughout the city and, and having represented that area for a while, there are a lot of concerns that I had been working through them with, with them through, uh, through the years. So 
I, I would encourage us to get a little more clarification on why that agenda item was not open up for public discussion. I think we owe it to everyone that lives in that facilitary, facility and the rest of the city. Thank you. Just a point of clarification, there is somebody who serves on the authority who is a resident, um, so they do have that consistent representation, but sure. appreciate that comment. Thank you. Um, Alder from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion then to refer this particular one back, <clears throat> Mr. Van de Castle, for the Green Bay Housing Authority. Second. We have, we've got a couple more speakers here. Alder from the 1st. Um, thank you. I know that as I go through life, there's usually two sides to every story. Mr. Van de Castle is not here to give his side, um, and if for no other reason than to have both sides come forward, because um, I don't feel comfortable with criticizing a decision that I haven't heard what the other side of the story is. And I've, I feel very comfortable having Mr. Van de Castle on any of the committees, and, and this is no aspersion against him at all. I think he deserves an opportunity to have his side heard. And so that is the reason that I would want to wait until the next meeting. Thank you, Alder. And then just uh, maybe another point of clarification, the appropriate motion here would probably be to hold the appointment because there's no committee to refer, pre refer back to. Um, Alder from the fourth. Just to hold is the, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, present today is a uh, city employee, uh, Cheryl Renier Wake. She also sits on the Housing Authority Board, and maybe she might have some information to maybe help us all out here and so we don't have to wait two weeks. Great. Ms. Renier Wake. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm actually the executive director of the Housing Authority, so I actually dealt with this issue directly with Alder um, Weary. So HUD regulations do not allow smokers at Mason Manor on the campus in the building. We're, that's the goal of going smoke-free for public housing. So we had to make a policy change to remove the smoke, that you can't smoke on site. You know, three strikes, you're out. It's a pretty big deal. There's um, for sure one neighbor that was right at the end of our entrance on Locust Street. And Mason Manor smokers would come down to Locust and they'd kind of walk down that street or they'd sit in their car or, and so it, and it, it's annoying. Look, I'm the last person in the world to support smoking, <laughs> trust me. Um, but, and I'm sure it was annoying to the neighbor there. So we would work with the tenants and tell them to go a different way. I think most of them go up actually on Admiral Court now. That tenant or that owner has since sold the house that's there and there are new owners. Um, we haven't had any issues with that. And we weren't aware of, of this big groundswell of people who were complaining about the smokers. So in talking with Alder Weary, I think, and talking with Attorney Van Castle, we can't change those HUD rules. So to put that on an agenda item to give this neighbor the opportunity to speak to, to change a rule that we can't change, we didn't think it was fruitful, we offered to meet with them. I mean, we certainly will meet with any neighbors. We've never said we wouldn't, so it wasn't, you know, I, it, it kind of sounds like it was this bully moved by our chair to just not put it on the agenda. Um, and that wasn't the case at all. So, and we, as, as stated to Alder Weary, we're happy to meet with any neighbors ever with regards to Mason Manor policies. So, if you've got the neighbors and you want me to call them directly, give me their numbers. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Renewerwick? Uh, yeah, thank you. Alder from the 8th. Thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. You know, and there are probably a half dozen neighbors who are affected, not just Mrs. Ward, who did move. Uh, there are others. There's, there's cases of the people getting out of their cars and chasing residents inside. <laughs> um, they, wanted a, they wanted a place to be able to present publicly their concerns of what this policy change meant to them on their street, and that was denied to them. Great, they could meet with you behind closed doors and in a, in, a, you know, in a meeting room. They wanted this in the public to say, hey, look, this is what happened because of your policy change. It's causing a lot of bad behavior on the next block over. And they just wanted to be able to present that like any citizen should be able to, even if they couldn't change it. Maybe explain it to them. So that's why. And that's what really caused a lot of backlash when I told them that they refused to be on the agenda. They didn't take that very well. Because you, they, you could have heard them out, even if you couldn't have done anything. We have that happen a lot. We might not be able to do something about sex offender, but we hear them out and say, hey, here's why it's being done. So just food for thought. Thanks, all. I knew 
staff had met with neighbors with regards to this. So, I mean, one of the proposals we heard was taking an old bus shelter and putting it on our site, which is the opposite thing that we want to do with Mason Manor. We kind of would like that to be a really nice place. So, um, you know, Bill Vandecastle has been chair of the Green Bay Housing Authority for over 20 years. He's done a fantastic job. And I think to put his entire career as the chair of the Housing Authority on this one item for being put on the agenda, I don't think it's fair to him. So that's just my opinion as the executive director. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. And mine as well. Thank you. Alder, Alder from the 11th. I represent Bill of West Housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the people are just smoking there about 20 foot. Alder? Excuse me. I think the people that on Bill of West are just smoking like 20 feet from their, in other words, from their walk out from there where they live, right. about 20 feet away. They don't have to get off the property. Right. I th is that the same situation over there? No, we, it, there's no smoke, smoking on the grounds at all. This is public housing. I don't, I don't think, okay, Bill of West is not public housing. This is actually um, public housing through HUD. So, what is Villa West housing? It, it might, it's probably subsidized under a different program, but it's not considered public housing. Sounds like a, you know, a pretty tough uh, sentence for some of the people that they have. You know, an older person that's hooked on cigarettes pretty heavy. It's hard to get it. Is. I think they should look at that rule a little closer. We worked it in. Actually, we knew that, and we, we gave everyone a, a time to try, to try to quit smoking. We've put programs in place for that. It wasn't a, like tomorrow this is happening. So we slowly put this into place, and we let everyone know before they move in now that this is a no-smoking facility. So, Whoa. Okay. I, I mean, at some point, the turnover will be in place where everyone will have known that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Villa West is handled strictly differently than mm -hmm. this situation. Yep. They're subsidized differently. I think that's pretty pretty uh, tough rule there. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alder. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Alder from the first. So now that I've heard an explanation and I'd feel very comfortable having the vote tonight, I wouldn't I would not be in favor of holding this. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the tenth. Oh no, I'm sorry. Got a big list of speakers here. Anyone still want to speak? Alder from the fourth. And after listening to uh, uh, Mrs. Reiner Wig, I'm going to agree with Alder Dorf. Um, although I agree also with Alder Weary that we have to have a forum available to the public to to speak their mind, so that we can hear them, whether we can do anything about it or not. But I think to uh, to cancel this appointment. Uh, based on this one incident, I think this should be a learning incident for Mr. Vandecastle, and I would certainly appreciate if someone from city staff could speak with him about it. But um, and, and maybe there's a different process when it comes to appointments, if there is questions. But this should be where it is in the public forum. But uh, at this point, I'm going to support Mr. Vandecastle for the Housing Authority. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Any further speakers here? Okay, so there was a motion to hold. That was made by Alder from the 8th. Do we have a second for that motion? Second? I'll second. Second by Alder from the 10th. All in favor of holding the appointment will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. It appears as though the nays have it. Um, so the uh, appointment has been made. On to the ethics board. No, oh, um, yeah. Apologies. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the fifth. Um, to make that appointment to the housing authority for Mr. Vandecastle, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Roll call requested. Yes, please. We can use the board. Thank you. I apologize. I just recognized a major oversight.
that reappointment is made, 9 to 3. On to the reappointment to the Ethics Board. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that reappointment has been made. On to the appointment. Second. Motion made by Alder from the first, seconded by Alder from the third to confirm the appointment of Cody Standall <coughs> to the Sustainability Commission. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Now we will move to. Noted as no for the ethics board. Or oh. Does he want, want it actually noted? Alder from the eighth. Would you like it noted? Um, your opposition. Yeah, please. We will do that. And now we're going to move to ordinances first reading. You may under suspension of the rules advance ordinances one through five to a second reading. Motion made by Alder from the seven, seconded by Alder from the fourth, to suspend the rules and take up ordinances uh, two through five. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The rules have been suspended. Uh, motion to. <laughs> motion made by Alder from the first, seconded by Alder from the seventh, to approve. To advance. Uh, to advance items. Thank you, Clerk. Advi advance items two through five to a second and final reading. Uh, we have that motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And those items have been advanced to a second reading. Um, so we're on. Motion, motion made by Alder from the seventh. Second. Seconded by Alder from the first. Mm -hmm. We do have someone who would like to speak to the item. Motion. Motion made by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 7th to open the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The floor is open. And please just state your name and address, sir. Bradley Klingsporn, uh, 914 South Clay Street, uh, Alder Galvin's district. Um, I'm coming out, um, so as many of you know, I do own uh, a wine bar in Green Bay. Uh, and I just want, I have a, uh, it's more of a principled opposition to the way that this was presented. Uh, this would cost me a hundred dollars, which is, you know, for a business, not the end of a business for most places. But however, I have recently opened this business and I do remember a time where a hundred dollars meant a hundred dollars that I wasn't going to pay for my past two bills to vendors. It was a hundred dollars that was coming out of my personal pocket to pay for things as I was opening my business and we weren't making money for the first year or two. So I understand that there was an outreach to the Tavern League, but I understand that the Tavern League is generally established businesses and they're, for an established business, $100 is a lot less than for a new business. And I think that the goal for Green Bay to try to encourage entrepreneurs and to attract new businesses should be to try to lower fees wherever possible. And in that regard, I think that we should keep those fees as low as possible. Um, alternatively, if there is a need for these revenues to be used somewhere to better the business environment for small businesses and for entrepreneurs, then I think that that's a worthwhile goal. But as far as I've found out from my outreach to uh, various members that are present, uh, I haven't, I haven't heard that that's what this is going to be used for. Um, going through this process, there are areas where it could be improved, and uh, and to his credit, uh, Mayor Genrick has been very open to the idea of improving these processes. Um, I would like to see that improvement before we say that we need to increase these fees in order to pay for the current process, because there are things that we could be doing to reduce the expense related to renewing these fees. Um, something that I had mentioned to a few alders was uh, when I had spoken to the administration, one of the things was the background checks on multiple business owners. And in that regard, the difference between a class A and a class B um, license 
didn't seem to be very much cost, although there at present was a 250 and $400 difference. So my proposal as kind of a compromise was to make it a 400, 400 even to bring them to the same level if the background check is really the reason that that's expensive. Um, then that puts us at a um, comparable platform within the city of Green Bay and still gives us a little bit of where we are more open to business than the suburbs around us uh, that may be charging more. So that's, I'm, I'm willing to, to respond to any questions if someone has anything for me. Great. Thanks for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Bill? Alder from the fourth. Mr. Queensport, um, what would you like, to, so you'd like to see what the class, I'm sorry, you'd like to see the class A liquor or is it the class A beer? Uh, so for the one that affects me is the class B. And I just, I just think that for a small business owner, even though it's $100, I think that by raising that fee, there is an impact on small business owners. Um, for the first couple of years that you open your business, the money's coming out of your pocket. And so we're taking $100 out of someone who might want to open a business in Green Bay. And, and that's my, my principled stand against it. You know, personally, obviously, I'm going to be paying that $100, but my business is established enough at this point that it's not going to put us out of business if you guys decide to pass this. But I do think that it would be good for the business environment if we raise fees with the mindset of we want to keep costs low for the businesses that are operating that choose to open in Green Bay. What I was saying was the, the, the city of Green Bay said that there was a cost to renewing Specifically, they needed to do background checks on the <coughs> owners, and the compromise that I put forward was if it's a background check, then the background check is the same cost whether it's a Class A or a Class B, and perhaps the revenues that need to be had to make this break even could be had by leveling the playing field between a Class A and a Class B. So you'd like to keep the Class B liquor at 400 Yes. And then the Class A beer and Class A liquor... You'd be okay with them going up from 250 to 400, so it's 400 across the board. I, th I think it's a defensible raise. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that everyone here would agree, but I was just saying that that could be a way that the city could generate more revenue while having a rationale for why that would be um, increased. Okay, and it, it was um, actually I got somewhat educated at our finance meeting by Attorney Chavez, and if you could explain, if it's possible, that Attorney Chavez could explain. Um, the differences between some of the fees that we have, that some are based on costs to the, the city and some are not. Attorney Chavez. Thank you, Mayor. So what we had discussed at, at finance is that there are certain fees that are established by the legislature, this being one of them where they set the rate or they set the uh, range that we're allowed to operate within. And as long as we choose one of those rates or right within that range, we're in compliance with the law. The instance where we have the discretion is where the legislature has not actually established the fees themselves. They instead say uh, you are allowed to adopt fees that cover your costs or have a, uh, a strong correlation to the, the reasonable costs that you've incurred. Um, and so that's the distinction that we have as far as what we're able to, to assess. So in this instance, even if our costs were $1,000 per application, we'd only be able to charge $500 because that's all the statute, the, the statute allows us to do. Whereas if it was something where we had the discretion um, and it was closer to $1,000, we'd be charging that amount um, to cover the, the costs of the city. So this is, this is one of those instances where the fees are established for us. Thanks, Attorney. And Al <clears throat> Alder, did you have? So I, I guess, uh, Mr. Klingsporn, so what she's saying is that um, these fees here are not based on what it costs the city to do the work involved with them. That we're, like all the other communities, allowed to, to raise it or keep it or lower it however we see fit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I, even I was mistaken that I thought it was based on how much work it took us to do it. So, this is a fee that we can just charge and we yeah. want to charge the max. And I, and I believe uh, research has shown that the other communities surrounding us are at or above what we're charging at this time. Um, so I just want to make you aware of that. Yeah. My understanding is that there is a max set by Wisconsin statute, and that is $500. 
uh, for both the Class A and the Class B, which is the proposal to raise it to the Wisconsin statute and max. Um, uh, I just also wanted to note that in addition to that license, I do have another $100 license that I pay the city. So I pay $400 and $100 annually for my renewal. For, I'm currently paying $500. This would raise my business's expense to $600 a year for the liquor license. Um, you know, in addition, there are a number of other taxes and things like that. But um, I am aware that the, the city is well within their right to raise it to that level if they like. Um, they've also been well within their right to do that for years. Um, and to do it as part of the standard budget process. So okay. um, that, isn't, that isn't a change. All right, thank you. Uh, Alder from the eighth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Klingsborn, for coming. This is the kind of uh, input that we were looking for. I believe that should have been done at committee. And a few of us voted against these uh, increases because there was no input. In the past, you know, when I served on that committee, we always notified the people involved that we were going to raise their fees and people would come in and testify why it was a good idea or not and we came to some kind of consensus. Do you think others in your uh, line of work would, would feel likewise that this is a kind of a surprise big hefty increase? Some of it's doubling the cost. Yeah. Um, so I know that the city reached out to the Tavern League. I did check and I am a Tavern League member and, and the Tavern League did not reach out to at least me. Um, as So they didn't do a general member um, output, outreach. Um, so I know that that's the case. Um, as for the feeling from businesses, um, I think that the general consensus is they don't like it, but it's not worth coming here for $100. So that's, that, that's the kind of feeling that I have from the other businesses. Um, like I said, for me, it's, it's a principled statement um, that I think that it's something that we should, as the city of Green Bay, I'm interested more in the development of Green Bay and the perception that we're friendly to business than I am for my $100 a year. I appreciate you coming forward and at least talking about it. You know, we haven't looked at those in quite a while, so while it does bring us in line with everybody else, it is a big jump, and that's the shock that you're experiencing, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right, entertain a motion. I'd like to make a, just a return to Alder Close as a question. Close, yeah. Motion made by Alder. Oh, okay. No. Mr. Klingsborn? Could you come? That's right. Alder from the first has a question for you. Hi, Mr. Klingsborn. Hi, Barb. And I love the aardvark. Um, so I, you have a Class B license, is that correct? That's correct. So one thing that's making me feel a little uncomfortable is there's no one here talking on behalf of the Class A's. And what you're asking for will keep would keep the bees stable, mm -hmm. which would be in your interests. And I'm just not real comfortable because the A's are going from 250 up to 500 or 400. I mean, we we might be bringing those down. Um, so my, I guess I was trying to really establish you do have a B. I do have you're a B. Yes. Talking about a B. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Thank you. Motion made by Alder from the seventh. Seconded by Alder from the ninth to close the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Close nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Um, just to provide some context, I'm going to go to Chief Smith and then uh, Clerk Teske if she has any thoughts on this. Chief? Um, you know, the background of check is not extremely expensive. I think there's an administrative fee of about $7. I talk to the folks that do the actual checks and do the actual uh, reviews. 20 minutes or a half hour of our lieutenant's time is all it takes. But if you think of the time that our police officers spend at bars doing random checks throughout the year, doing checks of compliance with our for underage drinking, and the uh, all the police problems that spill out of bars, as evidenced by what happened with the uh, incident on Friday <coughs> night into Saturday morning, we spend a ton of police time inside bars, checking bars, dealing with disturbances at bars and restaurants. Now, if this is the wine bar I'm talking about, I, he's completely out of that picture. I've never had a single problem there, and uh, I think it's a fantastic place if it's a place that, that I'm thinking of. But uh, there's a lot of other places that have the same liquor license, and uh, we spend a ton of time and a ton of effort trying to make sure that um, more problems don't come out of those places. So we're never gonna make, we're never gonna make up, ever gonna make up the time that we spend by charging a $500 fee. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Clerk Teske. 
the only other thing I want to mention is that we're finding um, with liquor licenses that some of the owners now are LLCs. So it's not just an individual and an agent. Um, these LLCs can be 25 people. So then those all have to have background checks because we have to make sure they're not felons or they're not underage. Um, so we're not talking just like an individual, okay? So kind of keep that in mind when you're making your decision. Thanks, Clerk. Alder from the 8th. Alder from the 1st, yes. Um, this is a question for the clerk. Is there some time sensitivity because of when liquor licenses come up that we must decide this tonight, or is there time to send it back to committee? Um, renewals are going to be due April 15th. Uh, so if you want to make that for this licensing year. Then it's pretty much yeah. this is it. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 4th. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I'd like to make an amendment, and I'd like to explain why. Um, I'd like to amend um, Class A beer and Class A liquor to $400, and I'd like to leave the Class B liquor at $400. And the reason I'm saying this, I, I still want some increase eventually, but this was an item that came up. I, I believe these items should come up at budget. And if we were to explain at budget time that we need these extra monies because our police department is doing so much work in a culture that is uh, got issues with alcohol consumption everything goes with it because they want to do interdictions they want to do more compliance checks they want to do a, um, more OWI checks or, or, or stops or if the city even wanted to get into um, a, a program where we're, we're trying to um, change the culture in this community either through education and things like that I could say I, I could really get behind this um, but make it part of the budget where there is a forum at finance and then again at, at council for people to express their opinions I do feel that the clerk's office did the best job they could to notify they went to the tavern league they notified the restaurant league it's very difficult to notify everybody with like the the liquor stores and all that other stuff but I think the city did do its due diligence on this. And this is also posted publicly. And, um, you know, I mean, people found out about it. I saw on social media there were several people that own uh, liquor establishments were commenting on this. Um, so the word's out there. And whether they decide to come in or not, that's on them. But um, I'd like to make that amendment for now and then come budget this coming fall. This is something that we could address whether we want to raise it. And if we're going to raise it, what are the monies going to go for? Thank you. Also, Thank you, Alder. So the, the amendment would to would be to <clears throat> put all the licenses, uh, all the fees at $400? Yes. Okay. And the, there's a second for that motion. Uh, further discussion? Alder from the third? <coughs> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, question for Chris Teske. How many LLCs do we have at 25? I don't know that offhand. Okay, um, you mentioned it, so I'm guessing you probably well, know a couple. Well, it's a lot couple. of the hotels. Hotels? Mm hmm Okay. We have 172 um, Class B licenses with, I think we have it's two or three reserved now, and then the rest are Class A. So, you know, Class A is like your gas stations, convenience stores. Those have stores. 25 people? Not necessarily, no. But we're seeing that more and more. Okay. We just, um, like CVS, they came in now with their renewal, and um, they have an LLC listed as one of theirs also, along with five officers. Okay. And then um, question for the mayor or chief, what do these fees go to? You said background checks, but I just heard something from Bill, we got to explain where the fees are going. Are they going somewhere else? The fees, according to state statute, the fees do not have to be um, set by how much it cost us. No, where, where are they going? Well, Ms. Manley. P Pardon? PD is gonna get some of the background check money. Okay, and you and said then, it was $7. Yeah, 
currently all the all the revenue from those licenses goes into our general fund. Um, we're looking to, with this increase, also give a portion of that to the PD's budget, but otherwise right now it's just going to clerk revenue. All the revenues help offset all the expenses, which lowers what the taxpayer would have to pay with the levy on your tax bill. Thank you. So the fees offset the levy. Is that, is that what's stated? So we're putting fees on businesses to offset the levy, correct? Cover costs. Cover, cover costs. And offset the levy, yeah. Okay. Well, <coughs> excuse me. So when we increase the Class A at 100%, it was at 250, and we're increasing it, I mean, for now, before we take a vote on what we want to deduct or reduce, basically it's at 500 right now if this goes through, correct? And then the Class A is 100% markup also at 500. And Class B liquor, basically 10, 20, 30, 30, 30 plus percent at 500. So all this money goes to the levy into the general fund to offset the levy. Okay. What, who decided that we were going to increase Class A beer, Class A liquor 100%? Who decided that? Yeah, I mean, this is an item that went through the Finance Committee. I'm just saying, who decided it? Who, who came up with this? What individual said, let's go 100%. Let's go from 250 to 500. Right. Mayor. So, so this was a discussion between the clerk mm -hmm. and my administration. And okay, so it was your office that decided to put a 100% increase at Class A beer, Class A liquor, Class B liquor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't support the amendment. We're talking about $100 a year. Um, we went through this before, but let's, the, um, well, I should have more, a little more organized, but like, <clears throat> the, the, uh, I appreciate, first let me say, I appreciate very much uh, Mr. Klingsporn coming forward, and, and, and he did reach out to me by email, and I'm sorry I did respond so late. Uh, I got the email today and, and uh, was in Madison all day, so I didn't get to him late, so I do apologize for that. But the only person we have heard on this is protesting on principle, just on principle. I have heard no one else, in, as we have heard, that this has gotten around, people know, no one has practically come forward and said, this is going to kill my business. This is going to significantly hurt my business. Anybody who can't afford $100 a year to sell alcohol, maybe they shouldn't be in the business. Maybe that's one way we can start turning that tap a little tight. That's been a concern for this uh, uh, city and this council for years. Um, I don't think it's uh, the decision to go uh, raise the fees to the point they were, was basically based on what the other surrounding communities have. Whether it's 100%, 200% increase, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's what, how shall we say, the going rate is in the surrounding communities. I think for us to match that is reasonable. I think uh, given our budgets, it's more than reasonable. And I just don't see how playing around with $100 here does anything for any business, but it's gonna make a difference for us at budget time. So uh, I support the original uh, ordinance. I, I supported uh, it when we spoke about uh, holding it and, and changing it up before. I still see no reason to do that. I didn't then and I don't now. Uh, I, I support going forward with the ordinance as it is. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 6th. This is for uh, Clerk Teske. Um, when was the last time we raised our fees? Um, I know longer than eight years ago. I mean, since eight years, we have not. Mm -hmm. 
So I didn't go back in history to see when the actual time was that they did up these. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I know in finance that came up, you know, we said, well, yeah, you know, maybe we should have done this a number of years ago and you know, increase it just time, you know, a little bit. Um, it's unfortunate that we didn't do it, but we felt too that, yeah, it's time because other communities are charging these fees. And so, you know, we should too. And we are not recouping, the police department is not recouping the money for all the time they spend. And yes, it goes in the general fund, but then the police department would have to ask for maybe a raise, you know, more money from the taxes in order to make up if we don't increase this. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I thank the gentleman for coming and speaking, but $100 increase isn't even $10 a month. That's two drinks a month that he'd have to make that up. So I don't think this is a, a burden on that. And I agree with um, Alder uh, Scandal here that we have too much, dr I'm sorry, we have too much drinking in this community. We're constantly, you know, people are, we have a grocery store now, another new one. I'm so upset on University Avenue that we're agreeing to go ahead with, that they want to sell liquor. That street has so many places where you can buy liquor in two blocks. I mean, no, no, two miles. It's saturated. So, no, I think I'm going to go with what is proposed here. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to emphasize some of the points that I made the last time that this issue came before us. And specifically, I mean, this is how, this is how reckless government spending starts. It's a little at a time, right? And that's what gets us into trouble. This is an unbudgeted revenue that has no intended purpose. We have, we have no designated purpose for this money. And if I recall correctly, we were talking, I think it was $27,000 additional that's intended to be taken here with no intended purpose. We have passed our 2020 budget. We have already set the expenses. So to make the argument that this will help subsidize expenses makes no sense in 2020 because we've already set the revenues that are going to pay for those expenses. Government should never be in the business of making money and that is exactly what this is doing because we're saying that this additional funding will just go to the general fund. And then from there, where does it go? We have no, we have no expense that's been designated through the budgeting process. I don't disagree with Alder Scannell that this will make a difference at budget time, but this is not budget time. The time to have this dialogue was at budget time, and it was the purpose of the communication that I submitted after the last meeting, specifically calling out a request for us to do appropriate cost accounting so that we understand where this funding is going when we are requesting it from taxpayers. This is not our money. This is the taxpayer money. And, and for us to, to argue uh, that we're doing this because we're, we're trying to be comparable with neighboring communities to me is never a defensible argument. We need to do what's best for our community. We need to be leaders in this regard. And, and, and part of that, that argument is really understanding where every dollar that we tax, every dollar that we assess as a fee, we need to understand its intended purpose. And I don't know that we have a strong understanding of that right now because as I've, I've indicated before, that there are no expenses tied to this because we are asking for this increase outside of budget season. And it's for that reason, if, if uh, Mayor, if I may, because I, I, I don't know if this would be an, a, a, an amendment or, or a motion that would be out of order, but I would actually make a motion that we deny uh, this ordinance altogether. Can I do that? Is that, is that an appropriate motion? Attorney Chavez? Under the ordinance, you have to, or on, yeah, under our ordinance, we have to um, send it to a second reading for adoption unless the council agrees to suspend the rules by a two thirds vote. I'm sorry, second reading to take action, not for adoption. So, would that be the case with Alder Galvin's amendment? Does that require a two thirds vote? 
And can my 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 uh, motion override Alder Galvin's motion to amend? The new motion does not trump a an amendment, um, and the so the first amendment would have to be or the first motion would have to be voted on first. And yes, it would require two thirds vote to take action on it tonight. Okay, just so from a procedural understanding, we could take a vote on Alder Galvin's amendment, whether it passes or fails, doesn't matter, but then a new amendment could be proposed that could either pass or fail that would alter the decision that was made with Alder Galvin's amendment. Am I being clear on that? No, can you say that again? Yeah. I, uh, so if Alder Galvin's amendment, we take a vote on that, pass or fail, you're relevant, could I then introduce an amendment that, that would essentially override whatever decision was made with Alder Galvin's amendment. Yeah, I mean, it would be really irregular to do that. Yeah. Unless Alder Galvin just wants to change his amendment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Alder from the first. Thank you. You know, I know I'm going back a little bit in the conversation, but I didn't get a chance to speak until now. I just. As chair of finance, I feel compelled to defend the autonomy of my committee. Um, we, the mayor and his clerk did not march into our committee and say, you must raise these rates. Um, we had a full and rich discussion. We looked at what the rates were. We looked at what the rates could be. We looked at the fact we hadn't raised them. We looked at the timeline of when licenses needed to be renewed. We had a very long discussion. This was not an edict by the mayor's office. This was a discussion from finance, and so that I just wanted to make sure that's clear. And did you have a quest, a comment on that? Yeah, I do want to clarify. It was stated at the last council meeting that the money that that we're going to raise, because prior to this year, PD didn't do background checks on renewals. Okay, so I brought forward that. To me, I think to do our due diligence with some of the things that have happened in our community that we should do renewals on all renewals. So I checked around other municipalities and they do background checks at renewal time, not just at the original. So somebody could have a liquor license for 10 years and we're not doing a background check for 10 years. They could be, they could be doing something that we don't know about. So um, now for this renewal period, that we're going into, PD will be doing a lot more background checks. So that is not in the budget, these additional background checks. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Thanks, uh, you know, as are things that do come up all the time that aren't necessarily in the budget. So um, anyway, I just want to clarify the role of the Finance Committee. And I think we need to take responsibility, and, and I do as Chair of Finance, that we are the ones that br brought this to this council. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I am on the Finance Committee. I supported this uh, original, uh, and I supported it at council last time, but I've had some time to think about this quite a bit since then. I do applaud the mayor's office and staff for looking for any way that we can raise revenue for this city. We haven't raised it enough over the years. We're paying for that now. We're down 14 officers. We're down a lot of equipment. We're taking out loans for squad cars. We're not conducting ourselves responsibly, financially speaking. And we do need to increase our revenue. So I, I applaud the mayor's office for every nickel that they can find. And I also understand that if we were to charge liquor establishments for what it costs this city, for not only police enforcement, but fire and rescue, housing, and the social ills, and I, we shouldn't be doing this because liquor is a problem, raising these fees. That's not the right reason to be doing that. Because I've seen members of this committee vote to grant licenses in moratorium areas where we wanted to stop liquor establishments from being established. So if we're going to do that on one hand, but then talk about shutting them down by raising their fees, that makes no sense. So we need to look at what are we doing this for, and this is to raise revenue for the city. And I think the proper way to raise revenue for the city is at budget time. Now, even my proposal, my amendment, is going to raise extra monies. And 
If we have to designate a place to go, I think we send it to the police department to use for alcohol interdiction programs, whether it be enforcement, education, or something like that, not just to go into the general fund and sit there. I did make the amendment because it did, in hindsight, one, I didn't think there was good representation as to the budget cycle, and two, because it did seem kind of steep in, in some regards. And so that's why I amended it to have it reduced as much as I did. At the next budget cycle, if we want to raise it to the maximum and we can justify it, I'll be in f favor of it. Because if you look, as the chief said, when you start charging someone $50 an hour for an officer's time, and you've got five or six officers working an alcohol-related call for several hours, you're starting to get into the hundreds if not thousands of dollars. And there's no way we could tax an establishment for that. They would definitely go closed. And it's a culture that we've created and it's a culture that we've supported. And if we need to change it, it needs to be done fundamentally different than just raising fees. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 11th. Thank you, Mayor. From this discussion here, uh, I think the city's looking to raise the fees. They talked about De Pere, what they charge, what the state allows. As far as, you know, if they do collect more money, as I think the money should go back to the general fund. Uh, we don't have enough money in the general fund to begin with. We can't say well, we're going to take money from uh, the inspection department and we're going to designate it just to the inspection department. The money has to go back to the general fund. There's many, many things, fire, police, Department of Public Works. You can go right on down the line. We all need money. They all need money. And, and I think not designating where the money's going. Uh, Chris Teske's office, they need money as well. Mayor's office needs money. Uh, every, every department. So I think the money going back to the general fund, that's, that's where the money's got to go. Uh, I know that from looking at this as a common sense type thing, uh, we haven't raised the fees in eight years. Grant you, it's a, probably a shock, you know, that they're going to be, you know, they're going to go with what the state, we're going what the state allows. Is that correct, Mayor? In other words, our fees are going to go up as far as what the state will allow. That's my understanding, yeah. Okay. So that just so we kind of understand that as well. And from you, from what you hear on the, you know, the police department end of it, even in Chris Teske's office, they're not breaking even on it. They're not breaking even at all uh, as far as the police and uh, all the revenue as far as it's not enough to cover all the expenses. How many hours they spend at a, at a call like the other night, alcohol related. So that's where I stand on it. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to say that uh, I agree completely with the uh, sentiments from the uh, Alder from District 4. Where I disagree is if we're going to raise them, which we're going to do, why not go the whole hog? I don't see what $100 it does uh, a year hurts a business. And if we're not hurting a business, if we're not helping out a business, if that's not the purpose, I don't know what, what purpose there is to, to not collecting that fee now. If we need them uh, to raise it to help ourselves, let's raise it and, and meet the levels that our surrounding communities have and the state will allow us to go. Uh, I just don't see any practical, from a principal point, perhaps, but I would rather work from a practical point, dollars and cents point, and I just don't see that $100 a year making any difference to any establishment from a practical standpoint, and from a practical standpoint, it does make a difference for our budget. So I still stand on the original ordinance. So thank you. Thanks, Alder. We do have another gentleman who would like to speak to this item. Motion made by Alder from the 10th, second by Alder from the 7th to open the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Mr. Joyce. Oh, my apologies. Motion to close the floor. <laughs> Motion to close the floor. Motion made by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 7th to close the floor. All in favor? Aye. 
the ayes have it, the floor is closed. Um, so we have a, a motion on the floor made by Alder from the 4th, seconded by Alder from the 10th to put all of the liquor license fees at $400. All in favor of that motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. 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 We're going to use the board. Actually, get them to. They were supposed to vote to. Well, I mean, they're taking action, but they had to suspend rolls by two. Yeah, two thirds in order to, to, to do anything tonight. Okay, but this is this is still with the understanding that they have to take action next meeting on the same motion. Yes, actually, I think that's <coughs> fine. that's fine. You're okay, because right, if they're just advancing it to the next reading. As long as they take the same action two times. It just has to have a second reading. The way we wrote it is they can't take action on the meeting that's introduced uh, except upon a suspension of the rules. Because they were wanting to like uh, either just receive and place on file after they'd already gone through committee and they said yes. Um, and it said you have to have two readings. So now we just added another provision. This is just one second. Alder, this is a roll call on the uh, motion by the Alder from the 4th to amend to the $400 across the board. unless the rule is suspended by a two-thirds vote of the members present. Okay, let me just read that. Attorney Chavez. The language of the ordinance states, all ordinances shall have two readings. An ordinance may not be acted upon at the meeting it is introduced unless the rule is suspended by a two-thirds vote of the members present. Still, it's the same vote, Alder. Same vote? Yeah. It just requires a different threshold, different which threshold. is two thirds. Okay, so that would be four thirds. That's the vote. Okay. So the amendment succeeds. Mary, I got a question. Alder, so Alder, 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 I will explain it to you. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Yes, so this motion is successful because it is by two thirds. So the the motion or the motion to amend is successful. The ordinance at first reading has been amended to the four hundred dollars across the board. Thank you. So now a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. It also needs to be two thirds. Well, acting on tonight. I mean, they can decide whether or not they want to, or if they just want to advance it to the next reading. So a couple options here. We can adopt it tonight and forego the second reading, if that's a preference of the council, with a two-thirds vote. Um, or we can just advance it to the next reading with a simple majority vote. Motion made to adopt by Alder from the first. Seconded by Alder from the second. Uh, we'll use the board again on that.
So the ordinance has been adopted, 10 to 2. All right, next item is public hearings. We have three items for public hearings. like to speak to any of these items is there anyone here who would like to speak is there anyone here who would like to speak I'll let the record reflect that no one is here to speak to any of these items under public hearings okay so on to ordinances for a second reading you may <laughs> Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th to suspend the rules, take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. M motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to adopt items J1 through J3. Please use the board. Pass unanimously. On to K, report of the Improvement and Services Committee. Cool. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first to approve report K, which is the report of the Improvement and Services Committee from the meetings on February 12, 2020, and February 25th, 2020. Um, 13 will be held separately. Any others? Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of the report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item 13. Alder from the, or what are your wishes regarding 13? Motion, Motion made by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 1st. To approve, the item was pulled by the Alder from the 9th. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just two, two questions that might affect, I guess, the amount that we're looking to to bond if depending on the clarification so uh, first question perhaps this would be for direct Alan Becker does the city have a uh, capitalization policy that outlines um, benchmarks or thresholds at what point items can be bonded oh, sorry. well I'm sorry uh, assistant director Manley Diane is on vacation. I'll take it. Um, we we do have a policy that kind of covers uh, multiple facets of it. Of, of one of how much bonding we're allowed to do. Um, also, we have our our policy says what we should be bonding for and what we shouldn't be bonding for. What items? Thank you for that clarification. I guess specifically, maybe you could answer this more directly. There are two items in particular within the bond request. Uh, both were for windows, uh, one in the amount of $15,000 and the other in the amount of $30,000. And as we continue to have the dialogue about uh, the growing debt within the city, I'm specifically curious about those two I items, you know, and kind of what, what the city's policy is in terms of um, what warrants a bond request versus something that ought to be paid through through the annual levy. So do we have like a minimum threshold that says anything, you know, above this amount anything below a certain amount should be paid for through the levy? Our capitalization threshold is $5,000. So anything below $5,000 we should not be borrowing or bonding for. Um, as far as bonding, you know, usually we're bonding for 20 years. So we'd look at the useful life of what we're looking to bond for. Um, windows, I, I wouldn't know the useful life, but I would think 20 years would be about right for something like that. Um, looking at squad cars, something like that, we usually don't bond. Then we end up taking out notes for a shorter period of time because our squad cars won't last 20 years. Okay, and to your knowledge, do you know when the last time was that we addressed that capitalization policy? Uh, not to my knowledge, not in the seven okay. years I've been here. Okay, and I'm off topic a little bit, but thank you for that, that quick answer. Um, and then the, the second question that I had, uh, and I, I know Director Grenier and I spoke before the meeting. He wasn't quite sure, uh, Mayor, so if either you could answer or you could direct it to the appropriate staff person. It was my understanding 
uh, that when we approved the budget, it was passed by removing, I, I believe the number was $341,000 for blacktop and joint sealant, and it was with the intent uh, that black, blacktop and joint sealant would be paid for through the wheel tax. Is, is that correct in terms of how that passed? Director Grenier? Yes, that is correct. The number is 231,600. 104,000 was in the blacktop account and 120, 127,600 was the joint ceiling. Thank you, Director Grenier. Then when, you, when in your, uh, your proposal for the bonding proposal, was that taken into consideration or do we need to amend the bond proposal to increase it by that amount? Well, actually, uh, no, it was not taken into account in the proposal. Uh, with discussions with Assistant Director Manley, uh, there are also bonding costs that will go along with that increase, and bonding is done in $5,000 increments. So our recommendation, if you look at page 53 in your packet, that is the summary, uh, the financial summary for the Capital Improvement Program, our recommendation would change the vehicle registration fees would drop from two million two hundred and eighty five thousand to two million fifty thousand that would come down by two hundred thirty five thousand dollars that increases the bond issue related to pavement from five million nine hundred eighty thousand to six million two hundred fifteen thousand which in turn changes the levy supported borrowing uh, which is in the middle of your page, from six million twenty-five thousand to a request of six million two hundred sixty thousand. Thank you, Director Grenier. Uh, I would move that we make the amendment. That, that I would move to amend the numbers based on what Director Grenier said. Please don't make me repeat them. <laughs> the motion has been made to uh, um, amend the item. Given the information provided by Director Grenier, do you have a second? Second. Seconded by, motion made by Alder from the ninth, second by Alder from the seventh. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. You guys have it. The item has been amended. Entertain a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Sorry. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item has been adopted. On to L. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve Report L, which are the reports of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meetings on February 10 and February 24, 2020. Any items you wish to handle separately? No items here. We do have a uh, request to speak. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st. Open the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The floor is open. Sir, just please state your name and address for us. My name is Michael Joyce. I am one of the owners of Player 2 Arcade Bar in Appleton. Uh, we are looking to open a second location in Green Bay on Washington Street. Uh, it used to be El Presidente. Uh, I thought maybe it was imperative to speak today. Just judging how the conversation went and, and, and the conversations on liquor, uh, maybe it's not. I see you shaking your head. Um, but that being said, um, we just a few points. We feel like we add something culturally different that the city of Green Bay doesn't have right now. Um, <clears throat> we're currently ranked as the number one arcade bar in the state of Wisconsin, and we're really excited about bringing that here. Uh, if we get approval, um, we will immediately be spending money in the community here uh, starting tomorrow. And um, we're a family business. I know there was some concern about us in food. Uh, that is one of the big expenditures that we plan on doing tomorrow is uh, thirteen dollars to $14,000 worth of equipment to make food at the location. So uh, that is all I had. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, sir. Excited to have you in Green Bay. Appreciate that. Uh, motion made by Alder from the 10th, second by Alder from the 7th to close the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. All right, I don't think we have any items to be held separately. Um, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved. 
On to M, report of the Protection and Policy Committee. Approved. Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 10th to approve Report M, <coughs> which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Any names for which you'd like to be recorded as abstaining? <coughs> Any names to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to N, report of the Plan Commission. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve Report N, which is the report of the Plan Committee from the meeting on February 24, 2020. Any items here you'd, to, you'd like to handle separately? One. Item 1. Any others? All right. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of Item 1. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 4th. Item was pulled by the Alder from the 9th. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I did watch the committee discussion around this particular item, and I, I just at least wanted to at least call to the council's attention for those maybe that hadn't had the opportunity to review it, but uh, one of the, I think the major concerns that I have on this particular item, and I would certainly refer to, to Dr. Vong for comments afterwards, is that uh, we essentially have a, a, I mean, a, a company here that was asked to relocate their billboard um, as part of the Quick Trip Festival Foods redevelopment. And when we relocated that billboard, uh, it was, uh, we also, as you may recall, approved the construction of a new Burger King over in that area. And when that Burger King was constructed, it essentially cut off an entire side of that billboard that really has no value for that company any longer. And so I would just ask uh, Dr. Vonk if he could perhaps comment on that, uh, why the staff had recommended denial or, or maybe any other pertinent information that was discussed at committee. Director Vonk. Uh, sure. So uh, this billboard um, was relocated as part of the Festival Foods Redevelopment Project. Um, there was a billboard um, that was on, uh, I think it was the old Conard gas station site. Um, that billboard was moved um, when there were some changes done to um, the interchange with, with I-43. Um, and in some cases, we believe through our records, um, was, was moved illegally and um, moved onto property after it was acquired um, by the, or sold from the DOT um, that it did restrictions on it about not placing a billboard on it. Um, and so we went through the discussion with, um, you know, the Festival Foods Development Project. Um, I think at that time we actually pressed to make that billboard go away because we didn't believe it should even be there in the first place. Um, with that, um, that was part of the deal that was struck in, in terms of the development agreement and that billboard uh, was to be relocated um, to the um, present day festival food site, um, which at, at that time uh, was just one large parcel. So it included the festival foods, the quick trip, the um, shopping center, uh, and then the vacant parcel. Um, and they had some limitations on, on where they could move that billboard. Um, but with that, they chose the spot for where the billboard was going to be located. Um, I, I think at that time, um, the property, uh, which I believe used to be P's Optometry, um, was also for, for sale. Um, you know, the developer had an opportunity to purchase that property and kind of control the destiny there. Um, but they chose to put the, the billboard uh, basically up against the property line at that property. Um, so part of also why we recommended denial is we did not change the zoning um, of that piece of property. So in, in terms of um, the developer at the time had, had full knowledge of, of what could be built and the height um, on, on that property, um, it was known at the time that the billboard was relocated. Um, you know, with that, the Burger King, when it did come through um, for a conditional use permit um, and, and a variance, those are some dimensional things that have to do with the, the drive-through and setbacks. They did not um, alter the height in any way. Um, so with that, I think a, a part of a bigger picture is, um, you know, going back to that development agreement um, and a lot of things in the University have new plan, um, you know, we were really conscious about um, how university had developed and how we would like it to see redeveloped. And, and in terms of attention to detail, this is a major gateway uh, into the city. Um, you know, I think the same thing for, for Webster Avenue. Uh, and so we're very conscious in terms of 
um, you know, working with a developer and, and limiting the height of all the signs on, on the property. Um, you know, the, the main sign for the festival and the quick trip. Um, and with that, we reached an agreement that the billboard height would be capped at 30 feet. Um, and, and with that, to, to maintain that, that sense of um, integrity on that corridor, um, that's why we recommended not changing the PUD to keep it at, at the 30 feet. Thanks, Director. <clears throat> Thank you for that explanation. Just one maybe follow-up question, because parts of the video were grainy, and, and so you filled in some of the gaps there that I couldn't quite capture watching the video. You had mentioned, though, that the, the billboard was placed there illegally. Is it, is, is it still not in compliance? Um, it, it is in compliance now. The, the, our um, view was on the old parcel where it was. Um, it was remnant DOT parcel that when the DOT sold that to the previous property owner, they placed a deed restriction on that property that said you can't have a billboard on it. And, and at one time, the billboard move, was moved from uh, a previous location to the piece of property that had that deed restriction. Um, it was moved, you know, unbeknownst to us, but when we went through, we found that deed restriction. So that's why um, the billboard moved off of it. So it was a, a moot point, um, but where it was placed, um, there was consultation with the DOT because there are some rules about spacing billboards on, on state highways. Um, and it was placed in a spot that was in conformance. So at, as it's constructed now, um, we believe it is conforming. Okay. Um, okay. So I know that the, the motion is to approve. I'm, I'm going to vote to not approve uh, the, the recommendation by the committee simply because um, here in this particular instance, we do have, um, a, 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 I guess, a billboard that is in compliance, and it was an action of this body uh, that allowed the construction of a building that essentially wiped out half of their revenue generating opportunity on this private investment within the city of Green Bay. So I just at least wanted to offer up that explanation why I'm going to uh, vote not in favor to deny the committee recommendation. Thank you. Thanks, Elder. Any further comments? Motion before us is approval. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. On to report of the Finance Committee. Approved. Mayor, it, could, could I be recorded as a no vote on that, please? Sure. Thank you. Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve Report O, which is the report of the Finance Committee from the meeting on February 25th, 2020. And uh, any items here to be handled separately? Two. Item two. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. Um, the item was pulled by the Alder from the twelfth. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to be <clears throat> noted as abstaining from the vote. My wife is employed by the recipient of the contract. Very good. Thank you. That will be noted. All right. So we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Uh, noting the abstention. On to P, report of the Park Committee. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve report P, which is the report of the Park Committee from the meeting on February 26, 2020. Anything to be handled separately here? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. From the Personnel Committee. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th to approve report Q, which is the report of the Personnel Committee from the meeting on February 25th, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Two. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving that remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st. The item was pulled by Alder from the 12th. Thank you, Mayor. Now, if I recall, the council just voted about a year ago to revise or update the dress policy, and I understand we're striking through much of that language and replacing it with a very streamlined dress policy addressed for your day policy, wondering if Director Fultz could just give a short synopsis of how we're going from a more 
detailed dress code policy to something much more streamlined. And if there are any uh, any concerns he has about enforcement of such a policy. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Director Fultz. Yeah, so the reason why this policy was brought up last year was for 22.2.3, the employee identif identification badges. That's the only reason why that was brought up last year. So we didn't make any change to the dress policy. I think this has been in place for probably 10 plus years. So the, the dress for your day policy, it's really about um, just allowing our employees to use good judgment when deciding what to wear to work. So we do have guidelines. And if you look at the guidelines that are in the proposed policy, they're really not that much different than the guidelines that we have in the current policy. So I don't think enforcement really is going to be that much of an issue with them. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, just a couple comments. You know, we, I've uh, managed and I currently manage employees in, in situations where there are violations of a dress code. I, I will say from experience, it's good to have a detailed policy to point to because sometimes these dress code violations are a gray area and it's hard to make a judgment call. So that's just my experience. I'm not going to say I'm a no vote. I'll, I'll vote for it, but I will do so with uh, hope, anyways, that we can revisit this in a year and we can look at what sorts of complaints, how much management time, how much human resource time is spent um, correcting these sorts of issues. So. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of it. I'm a little leery about going from a three-page, ver very detailed document down to a page and a half, but I trust that this has been considered and studied and, and the staff will report back maybe in a year and give us an update. Thank you. Sounds good. That's reasonable, Alder. Thanks for the input. Any other comments? Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to approve, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. On to the report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve Report R, which is the report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission from the meeting on February 17, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to sustainability. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve Report S, which is the report of the Sustainability Commission from the meeting on February 12, 2020. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Item has been approved. Receiving place on file. Motion has been made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to receive in place on file the building permit and municipal court reports from January 2020. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved and placed on file. On to resolutions. You man, <laughs> I gave you a chance. Almost. You man, <laughs> you may under suspension of the rules adopt resolutions one through 10 together with one roll call vote. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th to suspend the rules, take up these items in, with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Rules are suspended. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to adopt resolutions 1 through 10. Please use the board. Those passed unanimously, 12-0. So we are on to Committee of the Whole. Uh, I would. Very good. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Seconded by Alder from the 5th. Please read this statement. Sure, Alder from the 12th. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Alderman Vanderlees and myself represent the districts that are overlapping with the Oneida Reservation. And one thing that I've try to do is be uh, you know as transparent as I can with constituents who have questions so I appreciate the process and what you've uh, invested in time resources to the negotiations and I'll vote for closed session that's not the issue the issue is is there any thing that either you you or the city attorney could just briefly explain for for constituents who may be watching what what we're exactly we're going to be discussing 
doesn't have to be overwhelming in detail, just something that can be out there publicly? Yeah, I mean, this is an opportunity for, um, for myself and for Attorney Chavez um, to brief the council on the status of the negotiations. Um, I'll just say it's been a very positive process, really enjoyed um, the interaction and the dialogue that we've had with the United Nation, and, um, and looking forward to informing you all uh, again about the status. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. The council may convene. The council may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.851, no, 85, subsection 1, subsection E, Wisconsin statutes, for purposes of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons. The Council may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to, sec <coughs> excuse me, to section 19.85 subsection 2 Wisconsin statutes to report the results of the closed se uh, session and consider the balance of the agenda. Thank you, Alder. And we will vote. Recorded vote here. Eleven to one, we're closed. Motion has been made to return to regular order of business. We have a second by uh, Alder from the third. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are back in regular order of business. Um, no motion necessary there, so we're on to a referral of petitions and communications. I'll open the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for the bike, ped, and traffic, a uh, proposal to change Cass Street from Bellevue to East Mason Street to a truck route. Uh, for protection and policy, to review and adopt the hotel registration and security ordinance from Ashwaubenon, and I've got the uh, section and ordinance number down here on the report. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the eighth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two. First is for protection and policy, creation of a resolution to our state legislatures to encourage an override of the veto by Governor Evers of Senate Bill 60 regarding placement of sex offenders. Personnel Committee clarified the term length of Vanya Kepke, currently serving on the Green Bay Police and Fire Commission. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the first. I have one. In the spirit of preparation and mitigation, I request request a report to the Finance or Personnel Committee by fire and what other departments may be appropriate regarding our current city pandemic plan in terms of potentially needed finances and personnel, especially but not limited to protecting our first responders from contamination. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. I have three. Uh, the first is the Redevelopment Authority to direct the Redevelopment Authority to initiate negotiations to purchase 927 Liberty Avenue, utilizing neighborhood enhancement funds, block grant, or other funding resources available to the City of Green Bay or RDA. Second one is to the Parks Committee to direct the Parks Director to explore land acquisition options with the creation of a park to serve the residents on the southern end of District 9 on or near the Liberty and 12th Avenue corridors. And the third is to the Finance Committee to review the city's capitalization policy and recommend necessary changes as it relates to minimum bonding thresholds in an effort to stem the city's growing debt. It's Alder, Alder from the 12th. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, to the Parks Committee for discussion with possible action on the status of fat tire bike usage at Hinosra Park. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other? Alder from the 11th. This is the Improvement Service Committee uh, <clears throat> request on behalf of the Hazelwood Lane residents to replace the main water line on Hazelwood Lane from Wood Lane to Packland Drive due to the frequent main line 
water breaks, the project should be added to the 2020 or 2021 project. Also, the second one would be request on behalf of the residents for a sinkhole in front of yard 1831 Van Nuys Court near the newly installed mini sewer to be investigated by the Public Works Department and we fix the problem in spring. Thank you, improvement services. Thanks, Alder. Any further communications? Clerk, any late communications? I do not. Entertain a motion to refer. Okay. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the third to refer all late petitions and communications to the proper authority. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Petitions and communications have been referred. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed nay, ayes have it. We're adjourned.